Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Welcome everybody, this is Danny Lambert with Plus Republic. Uh, today I'm going to be going over a topic that I get asked a lot uh, in day-to-day conversations, which is, uh, what is Pardot and how is it different than some of these other enterprise uh, marketing automation platforms? So uh, I guess a good place to start is to understand what makes an enterprise level marketing automation platform. So the couple that I think of, especially in the B2B space, are uh, Salesforce's Pardot, uh, Marketo, uh, HubSpot is certainly getting there, uh, Eloqua, and I might be missing one, um, but that's very different in the functionality that you get and you expect as well as the price point than you would get from some of these more junior level or entry level uh, marketing automation systems like a um, active campaign um, or even some of these like B2C marketing automation systems that like iterable, which is very specific to a B2C customer even Salesforce has an equivalent. The Salesforce Marketing Cloud is essentially their uh, B2C or, or uh, business to consumer marketing automation platform where Pardot is their B2B. It's more targeted around um, buyers within businesses. They have an account and contact structure, uh, account-based reporting, uh, a lot of features that are very specific to a B2B marketer's need as opposed to a B2C, and a lot more robust uh, enterprise-level feature set than, say, you know, MailChimps or active campaigns. Uh, like I've mentioned. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, what makes Pardot good and how it's a little bit different, um, better and worse than some others, particularly uh, Marketo, because those two come head to head a lot. Uh, the things that I'll point out right out of the gate is uh, Pardot has a much more um, user-friendly user interface. When you're in there, it looks cleaner, um, it operates cleaner, you can find things better, and it has a much shorter learning curve because of it. Whereas largely, I feel like you have more granular control uh, in leveraging Marketo. There's a lot better ways to segment leads and a lot more um, automation rules that you can do within your engagement studios or nurture campaigns. Uh, so I think there's actually a much more robust feature set in Marketo, um, but it has a larger learning curve. Uh, it takes longer time to set up and the UI has never really been updated. It's not super user friendly. Something else you wanna check out when looking at these are pricing. Uh, things that people don't include or don't think about right out of the gate is, you know, additional API calls, additional users, uh, contact blocks. Um, so we'll jump in right now and show you kind of how Pardot structures those. So first and foremost, uh, this is Pardot's landing page, and it's just like any other B2B marketing automation system and that it has your core functions, which are uh, lead capture, so capturing leads from your website, um, engaging with those people. So emails, landing pages, forms, automation rules, segmentation and lists, scoring and reporting. Uh, it has all of those features that you need, as well as Pardot is great because it is Salesforce native, meaning that uh, they, it speaks very easily and fluently with the Salesforce platform. Uh, you can get your data in and out of both systems in a very easy way just by setting up a connector, which I'll show you uh, inside of here. So if you come to the Pardot homepage, you go to solutions, you'll see kind of a lot of those things that I just talked about, lead management, email marketing, sales alignment, um, AI. So they leverage Salesforce's Einstein analytics. It doesn't come out of the box. You know, the B2B marketing analytics is also similar to this where you get more robust reporting than what they have by default and you can leverage the Salesforce Einstein analytics uh, platform to get you know much more robust campaign reporting. Uh, Salesforce engages an add-on that they have, which we will not be covering in this, but it's good to know. Uh, this allows you to create like marketing approved email templates that sales can then use. So imagine like creating a whole bunch of um, sales templates they can use and then getting aggregate reporting on how those perform, open click through and being able to manage that from one central location. Um, Account-based mar marketing, this is their like foray into uh, an ABM solution. By and large, it's not that great compared to some of the other options out there. Uh, there are like the Engageos, the Everstrings, the uh, platforms or the softwares that were built specifically for ABM. Uh, they are still better. Pardot has certainly not caught up with them. So I wouldn't be like, hey, let's go using Pardot's account-based marketing software uh, in place of another uh, solution out there right now. It's just not mature enough to stack up. Um, but those are just like my initial takes before we actually hop in and show you the meat and potatoes of the Pardot interface. Another thing I want to show you here is their pricing structure. Again, when I talk about what makes this enterprise, uh, the price tag comes with the feature set. Uh, so you're at, in this plus pr uh, plan, which is 
uh, kind of where you start out and then move up to advanced, a minimum of $2,500 a month, and that's only at 10,000 contacts. Uh, so you'll be able to get some discounting from their team, uh, but then you have to understand that your contact blocks are in 10,000 increments beyond that. So you, you want to add 100,000 contacts, that will be 10 uh, contact blocks that each will be a locked in price that you negotiate with your part out rep. There is no way to self sign up. Uh, you need to speak to one of their representatives and they need to sell it and it will be as part of your Salesforce contract. This is also something that's uh, very important is uh, part is not a good standalone marketing automation system. It has to be paired with a CRM system and obviously the most predominant one there is Salesforce. Um, so it's usually part of your Salesforce contract. So enough about this. Uh, let's actually just hop in and show you guys a little bit more about Pardot. So when you log in, this is a staging environment, so it won't be completely built out. You won't be able to see um, necessarily all the features because that would be sensitive information, but I'll go through, show you the different sections and show you how they work. Starting from the top, uh, you have marketing and within here you have a couple of different categories. What automation is, is it has automation rules and page actions. So automation rules is kind of like in, uh, if this situation happens, do this. So you can set up certain rules within here, name it, categorize it in a folder, and then you say anytime it matches these rules and they have a lot of criteria you can set from form fills to grading to if they've been assigned to a specific user, uh, you'll set this rule live and it'll actively listen for that event happening and you'll be able to take actions like add them to a Salesforce campaign, change this field value. Um, these are very powerful and automation rules are always on. Once you set them live, they'll be running and listening for those events in perpetuity. Their page actions is an event that you want to happen when someone interacts um, with a page. So you'll like put the page in here and you'll put the URL and then you'll adjust things. So in this case, if I put a page score here like five, I would adjust my lead score by five if they visited this, or I would take a specific action if somebody visited this. So a good example is if you have a prospect and you want to trigger on them visiting the pricing page, you can say anytime someone visits the pricing page that is a known contact, uh, identify the sales rep that owns them. Again, some pretty powerful stuff that you can do here. Uh, pretty, pretty robust in terms of its functionality. Although you will ultimately hit some odd snags, uh, which I'll go over in a little bit, or I'll actually go over right now, I'll hop to this engagement studio. This is like a flow builder or a drip sequence creator where you can like essentially take people down the different paths that you'd want for nurture sequences. Say a lead comes in, sales talk to them, but they're not a good fit right now and they put them into like a nurture um, lead stage, then you can create all these workflows to say like, if they open the email, do X, Y, and Z. If they click the landing page, do this, update their score, et cetera, et cetera. The thing that I've always felt is very odd about Pardot is they have a delay function here. So if you want to like delay, sorry, it's actually on the event. So say I send this email, you can only set a delay here for when it can evaluate and it's only in daily increments. So if I want to wait an hour, like send an email, wait to see if they click, and then an hour later if they haven't do something, you don't have hour incrementing. You only have to do it in larger increments, which is days, which sometimes is, actually oftentimes is just too long. So I think that's one of the weird drawbacks, and I've looked through all their tickets, like support tickets. They've yet to fix that, which seems like a very obvious one. But other than that, their engagement studio is pretty robust. Uh, you have a whole bunch of obvious actions you can do here from adding to a list, creating Salesforce tasks, adding a Salesforce campaign, sending emails, all the way down to like tags and such like that. And then you have uh, triggers so it can like on an email link click or a form fill or a file download, you know, you can trigger based on that. And then they have uh, rules so you can say like if it matches, if they're on like this list, do X, Y, and Z. Um, so I think that they have uh, a pretty good user interface for this. It's very user friendly, especially compared to Marketo's, but it's a little bit lacking in some of the functionality, like I mentioned with um, you know, like day waits between activities or day delays instead of something a little bit shorter than that. Uh, other things in here is your marketing calendar. So when you have a whole bunch of things scheduled, again, this is a staging environment, so you can't see it, but if you have email scheduled, content, all that stuff, you can map it out on here so everyone can see your content calendar. Uh, their campaigns are really cool, uh, especially if you use Salesforce campaigns. So one of the settings you can do is inherit the campaign structure for Salesforce, which I think is always a great idea, so that it's a one-to-one -one match. So if someone comes in and fills out an ebook, becomes a lead, they will match the Salesforce campaign for that ebook. 
um, and those will always be in sync. So I'm a big supporter of how their campaigns work. It integrates very well with Salesforce and makes sure uh, campaign level reporting, uh, very easy for people who aren't technical users to follow. Uh, this next section is uh, content. Files is like having an S3 bucket, right? You can upload your images, you can upload PDFs, and then you'll have uh, those hosted somewhere where people can access them uh, and you can point to the URL. So for example, I put this file here, I can use that URL as an endpoint and then someone can come access this image using email, using the landing page, etc. cetera. Um, same thing for if I put my PDFs in there, like my downloadable PDFs, um, when people fill out a form, I can actually set automation rules and triggers based on if they access that file as long as it is hosted in their content section. Uh, custom redirects is like you change pages around, you want to set up a vanity URL that you redirect someone up, somewhere else, you can set that up in here without development resources, which is kind of cool. And dynamic content is awesome. It's where you set uh, various parameters. You say like, if someone matches this criteria, so say like, say their address is, or their city is New York, show them New York specific content. If their city is LA, show them LA specific content. Um, and you can use this in various ways throughout your content and adjust it based on what we know about prospects. So a pretty cool feature that they have. Um, a lot of enterprise level marketing automation systems have this, but I always think it's super valuable. Uh, email, it's pretty straightforward. They have you know templates, A-B testing, uh, preferences pages, and it, it's pretty much like any other. I'm not gonna go too deep into this as you can create you know all these various emails. They have a nice WYSIWYG editor. They have highly customizable uh, templates. So if that's a pretty straightforward section, you could dig in there yourself. Uh, Engagement Studio I just showed you. Forms here are pretty different because they have two different ways to do it. You have a form that you can create, um, like a static form that you can embed somewhere. So you pick the you know various form fields that you want, and then you actually can just embed this directly in your landing pages. The alternative is if you have a form, say you're submitting a form from a third party website that isn't your own where you can't embed the form, you can create form handlers. And what this is, is you just create a way that Pardot can receive information if you can't actually embed a form. So here you select the different uh, fields in Pardot that, that should be receiving from the form and you just have that um, form wherever it lives post to this endpoint URL and it can receive that information as if it was a form being submitted on your site. So an example of how we use this is we use G2 Crowd and they wanna submit leads to us. So instead of having it go to our email address, we just have them post those um, G2 form fills to this endpoint URL, and we just set up the field mapping so that it can receive the fields, and they go directly into our marketing automation system here, and they go straight into Salesforce. So, you know, if you can't embed a form on the site, use a form handler, and it works uh, very much the same way. Landing pages, uh, pretty straightforward. If you've ever used like an Insta page or a lead page, uh, this is built right in. So I'll show you an example of you know a page that we've built here's like our customer stories page uh, i like the way that they design this and that you can actually build the landing page template separate from the landing page and you can use it and make all the various sections of it editable so i find that their landing page builder is very robust very easy to use and you can make really good looking landing pages like this uh, relatively simply and then you can use all those landing pages and automation rules and the stuff that i've already shown you um, I'm not gonna go too deep into these. Search marketing, you can connect it, so it'll give you general keyword, competitor, paid search information. I don't think it's great. I think you should um, use Google Search Console. I think you should use your Google AdWords reporting. Go to the actual source for the search marketing stuff. I don't find that the Pardot stuff suffices, so I'm not gonna go deep into that. Uh, segmentation, this is where you create lists. Um, rules, tags, and profiles. So tagging system, pretty well known. You can just tag various things and manage your tags in here. Uh, lists, you can create static or dynamic lists. Static being you have to add it to that list uh, either from an automation rule um, or directly from a completion action. Whereas dynamic lists, you can say if it matches X, Y, and Z criteria, then add them to this dynamic list. Uh, so that's segmentation. Um, and the segmentation rule I should add is similar to the automation rule in this step up here, only segmentation rules will run once. So where this like actively listens for something to happen, a segmentation rule will say, I need to do this one time adjustment, like find everyone who lives in New York and add them to a list versus having it actively listen for that. That is when you would use a segmentation rule. Um, 
Social is where you can just get analytics and set up posts from your social profiles. And site search is a section where if you enable site search and you wanna see it, you can see what people are searching for on your website. So those are the various marketing sections. Um, prospects is pretty straightforward. You have four sections here. Prospect account is like I mentioned, a prospect and their account say Jane Doe at Nike. You would see the Jane Doe here and you would see Nike here. Pretty straightforward, you just come in here and you can see every single person that's come in. You can like select people and do various actions with them. But largely this is just to be like a source of seeing all your prospects and if for whatever reason you needed to add an individual or import them, you would come here. The one section that I would like to point out here is visitors because uh, the way that Pardot works is it gives you uh, visitor level information. So I would have all of like these page views in here if this wasn't a staging account. And the way it associates a visitor to then become a prospect is as soon as they fill out a form on your website, this anonymous visitor section or session then becomes a known prospect session. So it would take all of that activity and it would associate it with that person. So for example, I will just open this person. And if this was actually set up, not like you know QA and testing, it would take all of their activity from that visitor session and it would associate it with this prospect. Um, I don't like part out's reporting. I'll come right out and say it. I'm not a huge fan. I don't use any of their reporting in here outside of the email specific to see how our email is performed. I will use GA. I will use Visible. I will use Einstein Analytics um, and custom dashboards and Salesforce. I don't find that any of this reporting that they have is very valuable outside of maybe, like I mentioned, emails and some content analytics. Most of it you can get from a truer source, but it's nice out of the box for people who are like beginner level um, users of reports, but I think, you know, by and large, you can find a better source to report on it than actually within Pardot. Um, especially if you have their B2B analytics package where you can run all these more robust uh, reports in uh, Einstein and Salesforce, uh, even to the extent where they're starting to get into multi-touch attribution reporting, which they don't do particularly well just yet, but they're working towards it. The final section here, which I'll run through quickly, is where you would set up your connectors. So this is where you would come if you wanted to uh, set up uh, your Salesforce connector, and I'll show you all the different ones they have. So your webinars, you have GoToWebinar, ReadyTalk, WebEx, Google Ads, Google Analytics, as, long, as well as some of these others like OR Chat, um, Eventbrite, Wistia, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. So these are the social platforms that you can share through and you get the social an analytics for. And in here, although for some reason it's not listed right now, I think this is my staging account. Um, actually, I think it's because I already have it set up. Yeah, here's my Salesforce. Uh, this is where you would set up your Salesforce integration as well as all the various settings for what you want to sync, if you want to do connected campaigns, all that granular uh, setup information would be in here. Uh, then this is where you configure fields. So Pardot lets you do default and custom fields at the account prospect and opportunity level. This is where you would go to do that. Uh, managing your domains for landing pages and email send. So what uh, subdomain you want to use for your landing pages and what uh, email dom domains you want to use, you would set up here. And then um, I'm not going to go too deep into these imports, exports, recycling bin for anything you delete. And then user management of groups. So we use groups for like round robining leads and individual users, like setting up the various users of Pardot. So don't want to drag this out too long. I hope this gave you a pretty good high level understanding of Pardot. I'll jump into some more uh, specific features at a later time. I already have a video on how to set up form handlers. I'll go into you know landing pages, email setup, all that stuff in a different session. But hopefully this gave you an understanding of what Pardot is capable of, how it's a little bit different uh, than a Marketo, uh, especially how it's different than some of these B2C Arc Automation platforms or some of the lower end ones like MailChimp and ActiveCampaign. So if you like it, uh, please like and subscribe and I will create more content like that if there is uh, enough demand for it. So have a great day and hopefully this, uh, this helps. Crazy mother